Nick Saban and Kirby Smart were underway. And this one's going to go As a great out of bounds uh, and a flag down. So it will come out to the 35. Yeah, great play by Kendrick Law. You keep one foot out, that's enough to get it to penalty. Free kick. Out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball in place to the 35-yard line. Touchdown. Already a smart player. Right, right you don't have to worry about how it bounces. If you take one foot out and one foot in, it's a penalty. Smart play. Yep. All right, partner, are you ready? I'm ready. Hey, you know what? I've had a lot of big games, but this one has as big a feel as I've ever done. Jalen Milrow brings out the tied offense with good field position already. With that kick going out of bounds. The redshirt sophomore, Katy, Texas. Rodell Williams in the backfield with him. Fakes it to him and wants to go deep on the first pass. Almost intercepted. Milrow slipped a little bit and the ball came out funny. I, I think he got hit as he let it go and it tipped. Zion Loud, number 96, I think got pressure in his face. Did he tip it? I think he did. You caught it. And on the other end, it was almost intercepted by Javon Bullard. Well, nobody's been better throwing deep passes, but that time, Logue did, he did the job on the deflection. This is Rodell Williams trying to get to the outside. Maybe got two. That's about it. The Crimson Tide offense, he's going to have to carry a load today because Jace McClellan with an injured foot. We don't expect to see him play. And Williams will have to carry the load along with Jan Miller and Justice Haynes in the Alabama backfield. The discipline of this Georgia defense, they on the fly substituted. Got their pass rushers on the field. On a third down and seven. From the 38, Milrow try to direct traffic and try to get Nyblack in motion and does. And he settles in on the slots. Low snap, 37. Milrow, plenty of time now running out of it. And he's going to be dragged down way back at the 32 by Jalen Walker. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about a spy can't handle Milrow. But sometimes you have two spies. Watch this look from Georgia. Two of them. Which way you're going to go? I got gotcha. you. As Kirby told us yesterday, Jalen Milrow defies spies. I don't know if he meant to be poetic about it, but certainly those two spies paid off and force a punt by James Burnett. And it, Akai Muse is back deep for the dogs oh. off the side of Burnett's foot. It's going to work out, it looks like, though. And it takes definite Alabama bounce inside the 20. It wasn't pretty, but effective. Yep. Call it the 17-yard line. So three and out, and that means in comes Carson Beck. Jacksonville, Florida native in his first season as a starter, and he's perfect. Our lineups presented by Dr. Pepper. The first pass he completes... He'll be in the number two spot all time, single season pass yardage leaders in Georgia history. Well, if he does it, he's going to have to throw it against the best pair of cornerbacks he's faced all year. He'll take the snap from Cedric Van Pan, who's making his 43rd consecutive start as the center of that offensive front for Georgia. There's the pass. There's Brock Bowers. There's a first down and a bunch more. Bowers bowls his way down to the 41 yard line. Split zone, tight end in the flat. This is something that you can have with the tight end. Kind of fakes the block, a little bit of a keeper to the outside, and they target on the first play their best player. So we know he's ready to go, that's for sure. What we've seen for three years from number 19, a pickup of 23. They mark it right at the 40. First down, Georgia. Carson Beck whips it out in the flat. Got it to Dominic Lovett. And Lovett. Caleb Downs had to bring him down. Uh, as Jenny said, we're not here to protect the 29-game winning streak. We're here to attack. When you got a gunslinger that's throwing the ball as well as this guy, you might as well let it go. Lovett got into Alabama territory to the 46. Back-to-back -back first downs. And now Dejon Edwards. 
cartwheels backwards for about four against the Alabama defense. That looks like this. Dresman Marshall, ironically enough, after four years at Georgia, now playing a main role in the linebacking core for the Tide. He and Jermaine Burton both having transferred from Georgia, now we're in Crimson. Beck's going to change things up on a second down and six. With Bowers in there as a light tight end, tight end, they basically have four receivers, wide receivers on the field. Bowers, that slot to the top. It's going to be a screen out to Edwards. And Edwards going to be a little bit short of the first down. And Bowers out there is one of his blockers. He got a little bit of the defender, but not enough to get the first down. Tempo on third and short. Number one in the country in third down conversion straight ahead. And the quarterback keeper in the first down at the 35. This is Georgia's opening drive if you just joined us after Alabama went three and out on theirs. And the, the group that is more likely to have long drives will be Georgia. When Alabama moves the ball, they move it in big chunks, not usually in long drives. Ladd McConkey on the field. And Kendall Milton as well. There's Ladd outside wide. Now they shift. Two tight ends, both Delp and Bowers. And Dylan Bell as well, as they keep motioning people around. The play fake, a little stumble by Beck. Throws it on the run and throws a dart to McConkey at the 20. And don't think of Ladd McConkey as a possession receiver. He's as fast as anybody out there. Great route runner. And this time they take Brock Bowers away in the flat. So what do you do? Go to the next read. That's your job. And a 15-yard pickup to the 20. That's McConkey in motion. And that's Kendall Milton. And Milton got about three inside the 20 to the 17 or close to it. So what do you do if you're the Alabama defense? You must control something. Take away that inside running game and then try to get him in third down and long. And then those two guys we talked about make a play. You know where, where Carson Beck's going to throw from. He's on pitcher's mound right behind the center. Scored on 58% of their drives, third of the country. Second best in the SEC to LSU. Kendall Milton with a hesitation and then explosion. Touchdown, Georgia. 17 yards in a streak for number two. Watch the Georgia right guard take on the blitz from Alabama. I think it's Ratledge number 16. I watch this block. Watch him open up the linebacker blitz. Turns him out and pushes him six yards out of the hole. What an opening drive for Georgia. Perfect balance. A little under four minutes to cover 83 yards. Peyton Woodring in for the point after. Up and good. Not only perfect balance, but every phase of the Georgia offense contributed. Four for four in the passing game, and that offensive line, and they eight, manhandled it. Eight straight games for this guy to get in the end zone on the ground. 7-0 Georgia. Jared Zirkel to kick off for the second time already for the Dogs. And Alabama will bring it out to the 25-yard line, where they hope to have better luck than three plays minus two yards on their first drive. For Georgia defensively, Tyke Smith, kind of odd sometimes. He lead the team in tackles and interceptions. He does it. He's had a sensational senior season. So, and obviously the other story, Chase McClellan is not playing in this game. Odell Williams is the back. Odell Williams has not had only two double-digit carry games this year. There's Jace. It's too bad that he's not out there. Yes, very important player for the team. Yeah. That hurt the Iron Bowl. First down from the 25, and it is Roydell Williams. Nice, tough run. Still going. Got about six out of it. This is really the answer for Alabama to get this game rolling their way. This has not been a typical Georgia defense we've seen the last two years. They're giving up rushing yards. It's not what we've seen before. Those teams held teams all year to 70 yards, 75 yards for the season. This one's in the hundreds. It's hard to be as good as those cats were. And they're not. <laughs> 
Second down and four, empty backfield. Milrow has all kinds of time. Deep middle and got it. Nope, in and out of the hands of his receiver, incomplete. Coming across to make the play, Mal Malachi Starks, number 24, the free safety, plays the ball, plays through the receiver. A tremendous defensive play. And Malik Benson, the intended receiver, had his hands on it, and then boom. And I believe that when I was looking at the secondary, I believe it was just a three-man rush again. And he took a guy that's in the pocket right there, Jalen Milro. He took his time to let it go. Let's see if they can convert this third down. Third down at four. Noel deep down the left sideline, and Jermaine Burton didn't keep running, and, and, and the pass was way out. I will tell you, Alabama was fortunate not to get called for holding that time on the pass rush. Right tackle J.C. Latham was beat inside. Watch him get his arm out right there on this play. Watch it upfield, inside, and grab two guys. Just kind of a little hold. I think a good no call, but keep an eye on that matchup. Back to back, three and outs. Makai Muse standing back, waiting on the punt from Burnham for the second time. Whoa. This time, Burnham got all of this one. And Muse has to backpedal all the way to the 13 yard line for a three peat. But first things first, long way to go. They lead 7 0. This time, Bowers, nice job defensively. Brought down immediately by Malachi Moore. Two veteran play callers in here. Mike Bobo had his way on that first drive. Offensive coordinator for Georgia. But on the other side, they've got a veteran too, Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator. He's been around as long as there's been football, it seems like, in this conference, doesn't it? Yep. Mike in that first shot was way down to the other end of the booth away from our camera and Kevin's been around the block sort of seems like us yes in certain ways I'll take that <laughs> loss of three for Bowers second on at 13 back of the 10 Carson back near his own goal line look out now in his own end zone he's got to get rid of it and it is caught by McConkey I don't think so yep. trapped yeah you can't when you look at the you can always tell by the other team's bench when they start signaling, they get that eye look right there. They're all Especially when it's a, a, yeah. a Nick Saban going like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> but the Alabama defense has stepped up. Stop on first down, now third and long. Let's see if they can find that quarterback seven yards behind the center. They do not like to roll out Carson Beck much. That'd be the two guys Gary was talking about in the open. Chris Braswell, Dallas Turner, they'll be coming. Beck, though, goes deep down the middle, almost intercepted. It was intended for Bowers. And Malachi Moore knows that he had a gift there. Yeah, I thought Caleb Downs was all over. I think this is going to Brock Bowers right here. Watch Malachi Moore. Excuse me. I think it's Caleb Downs, number two, that is man-to-man -man on this play. Good coverage. And that ball sailed just a bit. Yep. Yep, just good hand fighting right there. You got to let that go. So that'll bring out Brett Thorson. He's got a tough spot here. He's about five yards deep in his own end zone. Caleb Downs waits way back. Number two on the other end in the middle of your screen. And they're coming after Thorson. They got close. And Downs has everybody get out of the way. And... Goes out of bounds, but could be great field position. Yeah, great answer by this Alabama defense that time. Fourth and goal from the 31-yard line to save the season and make this game as big as it is. That happened at Jordan-Hare a week ago. Here comes Jalen Milrow on the ground. Almost got the first down. Yeah, not surprised by that at all. How do you get Jalen Milrow in the game? Started out 0 for 3. Why not just do a running play with him? Get him involved, get him hit once establish another weapon for this Alabama offense. He got nine at second down of the yard. It all changed for this Alabama offense against Tennessee when they started running him more. No doubt. Tommy Reese started using him, and that broke open the offense. Jam Miller is in there right now, tailback. And he's got the first down. Pick up of about four. Robbie Oots coming inside with an inside fit. 
from the H-back position, kind of like an ISO play, modern day ISO. Number 45, Oots, comes inside and just runs right at this speedy defense. Watch Oots come inside and fill in. Just the old ISO play. So that's Alabama's initial first down of the ball game. And they've got it at the Georgia 38-yard line. Dan Miller, good run. Eight more. And credit that offensive line for Alabama. That time it was Tyler Booker, number 52, stood up his man. The strength of the two guards, 52 and 77 in the running game. A duo blow. Oh, my wow. goodness. It's not to knock down Stackhouse like that is not easy. They, they call it a duo. The tackle and the guard take him on, and they did it. No roll. All day to throw again. Well, and now he's running out of it. He'll keep it and trot out with a first down. That's the danger. You play great defense, and Jalen Miller buys time. Goes one way. Imagine you got to cover and cover and cover and keep covering. And then all of a sudden, well, let's just take a first down. Yeah, that's just trotting for him. That's really fast for a lot of people. <laughs> that's how elusive he is. Yeah, Warren Brinson said, I thought I had him. <laughs> So Alabama's got something working here inside the Georgia 27-yard line. And it's Milrow again. Off the read and a good run inside the 20. Run down and out by Dalen Everett. Those two offensive guards for Alabama. This time it's Roberts. Watch him on this play. This is what you're asking your guys to do. Just folds down that Georgia offensive line. The insertion of Roberts in the line for Alabama has made them stronger. And they've got ahead of the change right now again with a second down at short. Three receivers into the boundary. Jan Miller is jammed up and dropped for about a five-yard loss by Christian Miller. Just maneuvered his way. He was matched up against Booker. Watch him maneuver right past him. Oh, actually, McLaughlin could not get to him. The no. center could not get the reach that time. Tried. Yep. Penetration by the defensive line. They don't stand still sometimes. Remember, Jalen Miro has not completed a pass yet. 0 for 3. As Gary mentioned a few moments ago, they've been getting to this point on the ground. Now they may have to throw on third down and nine. And how many do they bring? They bring six. Nello fires Enzo. Oh, watch out. Right near the wall over there. Yeah, those two guys went right into the... I don't know if I should say watch out for the player or the guy sitting there in the corner. <laughs> you could tell the ball was overthrown and... That could have been dangerous for someone. Yeah, including the camera guys working over there. And it looks like everybody's out of the way okay. Meanwhile, Ooh, Jermaine Burton's right going. The middle. Ooh, yeah. yeah, but when you're flushed one way, it's really hard to get your eyes back to the middle of the field like that. Right. Will Reichert, a senior kicker, will drive from 43 yards away to become the all-time leading scorer in college football history. And he's got it. Knock it in. There you go. Congratulations, Will. Mike Bobo is here. Yeah. I want to document that. Mike's okay. on the near end, not the far end. <laughs> He's up for the Broyles Award as the top assistant coach coordinator in the country and one of four finalists, and that'll be announced in Arkansas on Tuesday. Wants to get a few more kicks and a few more points. Right now, Alabama is trailing by four with 3.43 to go first quarter. And Dejan Edwards for about five. Dejan, the leading rusher coming in, even though Kendall Milton's had those two back-to-back -back huge weeks. But this guy's Mr. Dependable. They're two different kinds of guys, uh, runners. This guy is shifty. The other guy is powerful and a burst of speed, as we saw in his 17-yard touchdown run. Up, though. 
point of attack. That time, that's exactly the way Alabama wants to play defense. Somehow got two yards out of that. Attack that blocker. Don't let him move you back. Running right at you. Stuff him. Peek around them. Shed the blocker if you can, but make a pile. That was just a stillman. Yeah, right a big it's pile is right. Just make a pile. Still no row without a completion. Vex, five of seven. And an empty backfield. Looks like Carson Beck does not like the play call in the formation. Yeah, and have to call a timeout. timeout. Yes. Not only was Carson Beck not happy with it, but the two players he had to tell what to do had no idea what to do. Most of the year. Yeah, he had tight rope surgery as well yeah. as Brock Bowers. Xavier Truss will move into that right tackle spot. They're down at two. Run blitz, and it pays off. And I'll tell you, the attack by the true freshman leading tackler for Alabama. Watch Caleb Downs read this play and turn it back in to Dallas Turner. Shot from that secondary. Number two is going to come up and hit it full speed. Nowhere to go. There he is. Turns it back into all the, the trash inside. Cleaned up for no gain. Another defensive stop for this Alabama defense. Dallas Turner will get credit for the tackle for loss, but Downs is the one that helped the cause, and it's forced another Brett Thorson punt. Yeah, your job sometimes, just turn it in. Yep. Thorson's kick will force a fair catch way back oh. inside the 10-yard line. Good, what kick is that? Caleb Downs, nice job by Thorson. Let's see how they come back this time from Tommy Reese trying to get this offense started. He still hasn't completed a pass here in the first quarter. Oh, They'll snap. keep it on the ground. Roy L. Williams. This time the bat snap almost paid off because Williams got to the mesh point with Jalen Milrow and he was still trying to catch yeah, it. I don't know if this is part of the offense now, but I think the Georgia defense, when they see that snap, they kind of freeze like, where's the ball? <laughs> and then he pops out the other side. There's a knuckleball coming yep. back there, but Williams made it. A big gainer for him, and now he's got another one. Almost a face mask in there as he picked up six or seven more. This is becoming a story right now. The two guards for Alabama, Roberts and, and Booker, watch it again. He gets the big player, just clears it out. A little help from his tackle. That duo of players, they call it a duo block. The guard with help from the tackle. That's a lot of beef. So second down and short play fake. No row looking for his first completion. He's got it back to Williams in the flat. And a first down. Williams stepped out of bounds, but he does pick up the first down. Georgia coming in has given up about 118 yards a game on the ground. You think, well, that's good. And Alabama likewise 128. But yeah, look what the previous two years absolutely. were like. Absolutely. That's what I was talking about earlier. They're in their 70s for those championship teams. And this year it's been a little bit different. Yep. When you put 10 defensive players in the NFL, that often happens. <laughs> and 34 players drafted in the last four years. So that's having some talent on your roster. Here's a big trio shift from the top of the screen. Kendrick Law in the game kind of does a lot of different things for Alabama. They'll keep it on the ground after all that motion and not throw it late. Oh, and almost picked off. And Javon Bullard says, uh-uh, not that time. I think it's going to be illegal lineman downfield. It was probably an RPO. I think the right tackle was 10 yards downfield. J.C. Latham. Great play on the ball by Bullard. Second time he's done that in the first quarter. Kyle Olsen is our referee. So as we end the first half, we're going to decide... Kirby's going to decide whether he wants to take the penalty or not. I hope we're in the first quarter, otherwise I miss something. Oh, was it in the first quarter? Yeah, <laughs> not the first half. half. <laughs> <laughs> I got my eyes glued. I know you do. <laughs> we don't want to miss a minute of this. And that was with receiver downfield. Offense, number 65. That penalty's declined. Resulting play, second down. I got that, that part right. You got that. You got the whole thing right. He's, he's almost way out of. I think he's open. He's about ten <laughs> yards downfield. <laughs> he he looks, about empty backfield on second down and ten for Jalen Milrow. Three man rush. Milrow goes down the middle. Got it complete. And a nice move. And that 
Might be a horse collar or a face mask at the sideline. One of the two. And another 15 on the end of the play. Again, protection allows Milrow to stand in the pocket. Watch the end of the play. Left hand gets it on the name Personal plate. Foul. It's also face mask. Face mask. Defense. Number 22. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Push down. Kobe Prentiss with the catch. Javon Bullard with the face mask. That last play again, both inside linebackers for Georgia spying. That means they're rushing three, spying with two. All right? That's five. You only got six guys left. Yeah. So Alabama gets helped by the penalty to move it inside the 30-yard line. And there's Rodell Williams bulldozing his way through the flat nine. This Alabama offensive line is making a statement inside out. They're they coming off the ball. Absolutely. They? In the first quarter, they've rushed for 50 yards. That's pace for 200-yard rushing game. They are mauling the G Georgia defensive line. See if they keep it on the ground. They do, but he's not going to get the first. Moments ago, Jenny was with Coach Saban. Coach, how do you get Milrow to distribute the ball better? Well, I think he just got to read it out. I think, you know, a couple times he had guys just couldn't throw the ball in time. He didn't do it. He just didn't straighten out, I think, a little anxiety maybe about what's going on here. And same thing on defense in the first drive. We had a couple of mental errors, you know, on the formation adjustment. So, just got to settle down and play. Thank you, Coach. Right, well, Milrow tried a quarterback sneak to try to get that yard and didn't get it. So, Jalen Milrow reminds you of Jalen Hurts the way he plays quarterback, but he doesn't do the quarterback sneak as well as Jalen. No, not that time anyway. He didn't get much of a push from Williams on his backside. And now it's fourth down and one. Alabama, three out of four on fourth down this year, and a couple of them came last week when they had to have him. A huge fourth down here early second quarter. Williams, he got it. Bullard made the tackle. He needed one, he got. And he ran it right behind the strength of the offensive line. Behind Jaden Roberts, number 77, and J.C. Latham, number 65. That's their two horses. Nice cut to the right by Roydell at the last second. Got him the yard he needed, plus one. This was the question. Could this Alabama offense put drives together? They've been good at chunk plays, but could they hold the ball and get drives? This is a nice drive. The Nine tenth. plays already. This is number ten. play ten. coming up. Nice mixture. Jan Miller. And flags fly. We're going to have a holding call on the inside this time. Holding, offense, number 77, 10 yard penalty, remains first down. Jazz and Roberts, the guilty party, he doesn't think so. He would be right here, let's see what happens. Oh, I don't know. Well, that, I don't that, yeah, that, was, that was more the right tackle knocking him down yeah. in the hold. He just kind of fell with him. I'm, I'm shaking my head with Roberts on that one. <laughs> At any rate, it's first down and 20. Nyblack in motion. He'll roll again, a wide snap. He's got a wheel wrap to Jam Miller. Touchdown, Alabama. Nice design play by offensive coordinator Tommy Reese. He creates traffic, and they know exactly who's going to cover the running back. And they block him on this one. You watch, here's who they know has the running back. Watch them create the traffic. Just enough traffic, he gets caught up in it, and it's a touchdown. 22nd touchdown pass of the year for Jalen Milrow. For Jam Miller, his first as a receiver. And it caps a long scoring drive, the extra point is good. Will Riker to kick. And Georgia will let this one go. Bring it out to the 25-yard line. Both tight ends, Delt and Bowers, 
Shift sides. Well, McConkey in motion. From the 25, the toss sweep to Kendall Milton. Got about five before he's run out of bounds by Terry and Arnold. Nick Saban's had some good luck getting behind Georgia and working his way back. Yeah, what did he say about his team is they've become comfortable being uncomfortable in exactly. football games. The resiliency of some of the situations they've gotten themselves into, including fourth and goal at the 31 last week, and they found a way to win. They are going to keep it on the ground again. Milton going to be a couple yards shy. Nice job defensively by Alabama and Fresman Marshall, the guy we talked about earlier, having transferred from Georgia, runs into some of his old teammates. And Amarius Mims is still not in the football game. It is Xavier Trust, number 73, playing that right tackle position. That is a drop off. Trust has played there all year, but he is not to the level that Mims is. Not a lot of guys that are Mims level. No. Dejon Edwards checks into the Georgia backfield. Let's see if it's a three and out, if they can convert. Dejon will try to do it, and does. Got about four on the carry, first half Georgia. And usually when you run like that, that means Cedric Van Pran. He's wearing 77 today and honoring his fallen teammate, Evan Willock. This time the push goes right up the middle. Led right behind number 77. Since that opening, Reception by Brock Bowers. He's been quiet. He's lined up in line as a tight end. Carson back and complete. Got it to Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint for the first down. Watch Carson Beck go through his progression. He looks right, he looks left. He clutches it a couple times. Left, left, right. Find it, find it, find it. And he does. Boy. Good, good protection, play. but a good job by a quarterback coming probably to his third target on the play. Rosemary Jack Saint stretched those arms out. Caught with those two hands way out in front of him for a 21-yard game. Arian Smith in motion for Georgia. That comes near side. This time, another nice catch. This one by Bill and Bell. You know, there's really, you know, when you lose Brock Bowers, nobody wants to lose a star. But one of the things that has helped Georgia during that time when he was out is the emergence like guys like Dylan Bell. Yeah. They found more go-to players because of Bowers not being on the field. Dylan has run the ball at times. He's caught the ball. He's thrown the ball. A little bit of everything. That time picked up six. So Georgia's moved it in. Side the 40-yard line of Alabama at the 36 of the second down and four. Blitz coming. Dejon Edwards trying to follow his blockers and spins his way for a Georgia first down. That's the second time that this Georgia offensive line has timed out the blitz. It's a rush blitz this time, and they pick it up on the go. Good job of cutting that off, making the play. When those guys are coming full speed like that, last time it was Tate Ratledge they got the job. Van Brand pulled out from his center spot, got a good block as well, and Georgia continues to move it here as we approach the midway point of the second quarter. Kendall Milton, number two, back in there behind number 15. He's got the Georgia touchdown today. Bell in motion. Beck rolls one way and now goes deep, incomplete. Well, that was close, wasn't it? Yeah, Arian Smith, the intended receiver, could have been picked off, though. Yeah, the opposite corner that really doesn't come into your eye this time. I think it was McKinstry. Comes from one side to the other. Watch, he just lays off, just looks at the quarterback. Quarterback will never see that guy come in the post the other way, and he falls back on it. He thought he had it, what, six inches away? Yeah. Kool-Aid got his hands on it, tipped it away. Now second and long, McConkey will settle in after being in motion, and he'll be in motion again. On the bootleg, the throws to Delt, the other tight end. I shouldn't call it the other tight end. It's just that when you got I think it's Brock descriptive. Bowers out there. I think it's descriptive. <laughs> I, I knew right away who was throwing to. <laughs> Caleb Downs made an open field tackle. Georgia trying to hurry up. Alabama trying to change things up defensively. They did. They got their subs on. Good job by Alabama. They had to hustle, and now Georgia will take its time 
to try to line things up here. The officials tried to spot the ball as quickly as they could, and Alabama beat them with the substitution. So third down and seven. Remember, Georgia, the best in the country at converting third down. Two out of four today. Back. In trouble. He's going to get the first down and dives forward. Nick Saban told us yesterday he's not Stetson Bennett, but I don't know how many times on third down and like six he finds a way to get a first and down. And I brought up the name of Drew Brees who used to do it to him at Purdue when he was at Michigan State. As a passing quarterback, you don't need to run for 100 yards, but these key first downs when you don't have it, just give me a first down and then get down. I don't need you to get hit. Picked up nine to move the chains. Again, this drive, almost a perfect blend of run and pass for Georgia as they moved it into the red zone at the 19-yard line. Kendall Milton, nothing doing that time. Nice job by Deontay Lawson, the linebacker. He did. He timed it up many times and didn't make the tackle, but he got it. Texas made their statement today as Big 12 champions. Washington made their statement last night as the Pac-12 title holders with their win over Oregon. Still a lot to be sorted out, but these two teams are both playing, and they pretty much know it, for a college football playoff position. Milton trying to get wide. Tripped up for a loss, the same guy. Back-to-back -back plays. Deontay Lawson, who struggled with injuries this football season himself, but he's going now. Watch the quickness on this play. He recognizes it, he runs it down. Two outstanding plays made by the inside linebackers. No doubt. Rob Alabama. There's the numbers on Deontay this year. That last play was as good as a sack. The tackle for loss makes it third down and 12. Georgia's got to get all the way to the nine yard line to pick up a first down. Beck, here comes the heat. Down he goes. They get to him, and it's Dallas Turner. The two guys that have had to be a factor in the game. You know where the quarterback's going to be. This is an NFL-style offense that Georgia runs. Their quarterback is there. It's third down. What can you do from the edge? And he does something from the edge. That's his ninth sack of the year. That'll force Georgia into a field goal situation. Patron, Peyton Woodrick is a freshman. Had a little trouble at the beginning of the season. But he has come on now and hit 16 in a row. This from 45 yards away to try to tie the game. And it's going to be oh, a false start on Georgia. It's going to be from 55, 50 yards now. False start. Kicking team from the 55. Five-yard party. And it's Back to back to back losing yards. The running play, the sack, and now the penalty. Making a chip shot field goal. Just a little flinch inside. And they all rings career long, season long, 48 yards. This from 50 for the tie. On the way. He hit the right upright and came out. And remember, the five yards made the difference. Can Georgia solve the running game? Rodell Williams is the running back. They fake it to him, and Milrow wants to go deep. Airs it long. He's got a man out there, and Burton in and out of his hands, but a flag flies in. We're going to have pass interference on Malachi Starks. I hate that underthrow pass interference play. Not a good throw. The DB keeps running. The receiver stops. I don't know, Gene. Tell me, what's a defensive back supposed to do? It's such a difficult play, as you said, Gary. Pass interference. Defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty. As you said, you got a D-back that turns to find the ball, but then he, the ball is so underthrown, he almost has to gear down a little yeah, to try I, to I, play it because they, the receiver's going to work himself back to try to get it. Yeah. Felt like they both just were fighting the ball. He was looking bad, but the defender always seems to be the one that gets the call on that one. But after the missed field goal, and then that penalty has given Alabama great field position. They're on 47. 
And Roydell Williams on the carry. Let's test your knowledge with today's Avalanche trivia question. Kirby Smart is the second head coach to lead his team to a 12-0 start in three straight seasons. Who was the first? This one's not easy. No. I mean, you can maybe Google that, and it could be hard for you. <laughs> At the bare front, three men inside, two edge players. Second down and eight. And it's Milro trying to keep it to the edge. And he's very close to the first down. So Georgia has struggled all year on the zone read with quarterbacks keeping it off the edge. This time a great read by Jalen Miller. Remember, he's going to outrun most anybody on the field. Might be the fastest Alabama player. Peyton Thorne got some yards for Auburn against Georgia in that capacity. Spencer Rattler did it for South Carolina. Some of the games that they trailed, by the way, which they're trailing right now. Third down and two. A short two. Georgia's half of the crowd making some noise here. The blitz. Jan Miller is jammed up, but he got it on second ever. Tyke Smith got up there playing that star position, the strong safety number 23 to help out. Watch him come from the left side, just out of the screen. Comes in there, you see him show up right now, but pushes his way through. Great second effort. Yes. And so that'll keep the Alabama drive moving. Thought Michael Williams did everything he could on that play. Yep. A blitz again. Milro has time. Delivers high, incomplete. Intended for Kobe Prentice. Again, good protection by this Alabama offensive line. Ball thrown maybe, you know, a foot too high. Yep. You like the receivers like going up and catching it in their eye level or just a little bit above. They hate bending down near their knees to catch it. They lose sight of it. Milrow still only three out of nine, but is rushing, and the penalties have given them an opportunity here in Georgia's end of the field at the 43. He fakes the toss sweep. Here comes the heat. Down he goes for the first time today. And it's Warren Brinson. And if you watch tape, Warren Brinson, number 97, has caused more havoc the last few games. He has been a difference maker in that defensive line for Georgia. Making plays, continuing his rush, not giving up and fighting, and this time he crawled for him. <laughs> crawled for that ankle and then held on for dear life. So that puts it back in Alabama's end. And Alabama will take as long as they can. Georgia has two timeouts, and they get the ball to start the second half. Alabama will slow it down here, take as much clock as they can. Well... A loss of 11 makes it third and 21, and now the timeout. 134 remaining till halftime. This one's got to get them to the 33-yard line. Georgia with that shift on their front line that we see every week. They're going to try to draw them off sides first. With it being fourth and less than five, they would like it just a gimme first down. Clock winding its way down, six, five, and... Nick yeah. Saban with the timeout. Nick Saban says, I'll take your aggressive and raise you one. Wow. Fourth down and four. They will go for it. Blitz on the way. Milro lobs it far side. Bond, did he get it? He did. He did. Hey, that offensive line for Alabama, you got to hand it to him. That was an aggressive attack. And that offensive line gave him plenty of time to throw the ball down deep. On fourth and four, they pick up 22. Just go to fourth, 17 on fourth down, right? Exactly. Miller, no gain on that one. Dropped by Azir Stackhouse. And again, the end of the play. And Isaiah Bond has become a legend in this season. Ball popped out a little bit. Under a minute. Milro scans the field to the end zone. And it's caught, Jermaine Burton. Touchdown, Alabama. The 
The gamble pays off. First to Bond, then to Burton. And Alabama stretches their lead. Watch the inside technique right here. Burton has to go outside, and then he gets back inside to catch the ball against Everett. And against his old teammates from Georgia. Oh, what a nice little at the top of the stem. He just didn't bend in. He had that little fake. That's what made the play. Reichert's extra point is good. He still caught it. Reichert's kick will sail out of the back of the end zone. How about this answer from the Alabama football team? Oh, boy. Whatever. Four receiver group for Carson Beck from the 25. He's going to throw short. Dejon Edwards out of the backfield. He dives across the 35. Beg your pardon, across the 30. And trying to get lined up here as fast as they can. McConkey is basically limping back to the line of scrimmage. Beck. It can't be McConkey. And now Beck's just going to hit the deck. And if Georgia takes their final time out, it'll be right here, but I don't think so. And Lad McConkey, that's just probably the end of the day for him. Absolutely. And that's from the play last week, gave him an extra week rest, warmed up, thought it was okay, but you get in the game, it's always different. I guess Georgia's going to throw one long here and ask him for the ball, not get it. Oh, I don't think that. I think they'll run the clock up. They did. Let's go down to Jenny with Kirby Smart. Coach, you're trailing by 10. You said that emotions and momentum swings will play a huge factor in this game. How did that play out for you in the first half? Well, we had good emotions and good momentum swing early, and then it slid the other way. Their quarterback made some good plays, and uh, we haven't converted on offense until third and shorts. What are you asking of this team in the second half of this game? Oh, come out and play. We've been in this situation before. This team's been in this situation before. We get the ball to start the second half. We knew that the whole time, so we want to take and be aggressive with that and come after it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And Kirby knows what he's talking about. Here we go, second half. Georgia gets the ball first. And they'll let it go. Georgia's first drive went 83 yards. Their last four possessions, only 60. Despite their first two drives being three and outs, then it was field goal, touchdown, touchdown. Now let's see if Georgia can come up with an early third quarter answer. Screen pass to Brock Bowers. And brought down after a short game by Jihad Campbell. In my eyes, and Brad, you, you know him as well as I do, it's, Brock is playing. He does not look as quick as no. he normally does. Uh -huh. 75% maybe? Yeah, right around in there. And now Lad McConkey probably out with that ankle. And that takes away two huge weapons. Well, McConkey's back in the game. Lad's in there. All right. Well, he must have gotten retaped and everything else. <laughs> He's oh. part of that three receivers to the right. And now one of them, Dylan Bell, comes back to the near side on second down and seven. Dejon Edwards trying to get wide. Finally did late. And then knocked his own man, Marcus Rosemary Jackson, this, out of bounds right into Nick Saban. This is the story of Dejon Edwards all year against everybody. Everybody misjudges the way he runs at his speed. He looks like he's cruising. Everyone takes the wrong angle, and he runs through those arm tackles. So Georgia with an opening first down to the 37-yard line. McConkey down to the bottom of your screen. Let's see if he will be any kind of factor in this second half. Carson Beck throws out. There's an exact Saints, maybe a two-yard yeah, that was, that was great there. defense by that Alabama defense. He wanted to go fake screen wheel. It was covered. First half game trends. Jalen Middle started to heat up once he started using his legs. His arm warmed up, if that makes sense. Carson Beck, seven different guys. Yeah, and McConkey, Lad McConkey's really struggling. He's out there, but he limped off coming off the field again. Alabama converted when they had to, including that fourth and four and that 22-yard Controversial play that we just talked about a couple of minutes ago. That's Bowers on the move. Beck throws right side, but it's going to be Rosemary Jack Saint. And oh boy, at the last second, he almost got the first down. Be short. It's fourth and one. Third down. Third and third and one. Yep. AT&T pylon can shows that he struggled and struggled and struggled and just 
Still a yard shot. Very good route against Terry and Arnold that time. That's how you have to run him. Go up the stem, come back down. These two elite corners for Alabama, both we drafted in the first round. Let's see if it's Dejon Edwards' time or it's a quarterback sneak. It's a pitch. Edwards. And Great penetration by Alabama, and they stop it. We just talked about Terry and Arnold. One of the things that the Alabama secondary does, both of the quarterbacks, McKinstry and Arnold, they will tackle. They will play the run. Watch him play the run. He's got Oscar Delpa tight end in his face. He takes it on and makes the play. That's Alabama defense right there. You love it when your corners will play run defense like that. You've got something special. And so Georgia wanted to take advantage of their opening possession of the third quarter. Instead, it's a Thorson kick upcoming. His last one was a 60-yarder. Caleb Downs, fair catch, called for, but it's into the end zone. Bill Williams have carried the load, the arm and the legs of the Alabama offense. They've gone field goal, touchdown, touchdown on their last three possessions. Let's see how they do here. Short game for Williams. Zero Stackhouse that time did a good job of making those piles. Right now, so you got to make a pile. Don't let them push you off the ball. Alabama going with a little bit of tempo here. Williams and stuffed this time. Michael Williams and Tyke Smith. Same play. Remember, Tyke Smith came in late on a first down play. He's in the same position this time, but gets there a half step earlier. Michael Williams forces it one hole wider, and that leads to the tackle. And it leads to a third and eight. Can they get any pressure? How does Georgia get pressure? They're in that look when they spy two players. They do. Two spies. Milrow going to go deep. Man there in between two guys. Nyblack and Burton were in the same spot. Well, it's he incomplete. Was, he was thrown to Nyblack, and Malachi Starks was in good phase that time. Ball again underthrown, and Nyblack tries to come back, but does not come back or come up with the catch. Really good coverage that time by Starks. And so Georgia does what they want defensively. Again, three-man rush, two spies on the play. You don't see that much very often at all. Makai Muse has taken one the distance this year. Burnett averaging 53 a kick. And forces a fair catch by Muse around the 30-yard line this time. Let's get started. That's Bowers in motion and Kendall Milton in the backfield, but it's back to throw on first down. He's going to air it out long. And Arian Smith has got it at the 20-yard line. That's how you get it going. The first explosive play of the football game, and Georgia produces it. A little bit of motion, and boom, there he goes right down the middle, matches up against the safety. Beautiful formation, nice call, and Mike Bobo when Carson Beck asked, said, I got something for you. Arian Smith, deep. the fastest guy on the Georgia team, a 51-yard pickup to the 20-yard line. And whistle stop play here. On the field of a completed catch is under video review. Okay. So we'll review this one. I did not notice him bobbling that ball at all. Let's look at it. Gene, weigh in if you want. At this point, I haven't seen anything that would cause me to think it would be overturned. We can see him going to the ground. Uh, I don't see the football hit the ground here. He's falling here with possession, as we all can see. There's nothing there that shows me he lost control yeah, of that I... play, guy. After video review, the ruling on the field stands. Up to the line quickly. Here's a toss. Kendall Milton almost got face masked by Dallas Turner. Picked up about four. And Milton's going, hey, he got my face mask. How about a call? And he's right. I think Mike Bubble will see what fake jet to Dylan Bell. I think he'll come back and look at, and that's Billy McKinstry down. And I believe, Turner came it? out holding his and hip, Turner, too. Turner, too. Jeez, yep. Two guys on one two play. For one. Dallas Turner is back in there after kind of hurting his hip on that tackle. And it's second down and seven for Georgia. Play action. Beck to the end zone. Not quite. 
Bowers has it tipped away by the guy that just came in for Cooley. Yeah, they attacked the, the new player on the field, NFL-ish. That's what you do, you go after. Trey Amos is on the field, matching up. They both turn around. Boy, that is really good phase and good work by Amos that time. No doubt. Now it makes it third down and seven. That's one of those, as a quarterback, you'll throw that 50-50 ball to number 19 and live with the results. Georgia's in field goal range, but they don't want that, and they can help it. They're looking for seven here at the nine-minute mark of the third quarter. Dominic Lovett settles in in the slot. Carson Beck looks one way, in trouble. Throws on the run, into traffic, almost picked off. Fortunate on that one, wasn't he? Bowers was the intended receiver. And Christian Story was the guy that almost had it, and Bowers now is kind of limping off again. Yes, Bowers goes inside on the play, and then when he sees his corner quarterback run to the outside, oh, nice undercut by Story on this play. Stays in phase, looks at the quarterback, and then undercuts. Who should have had it? You got to keep catch that ball. That saves three points. Well, they're going to go for three points. Peyton Woodring will try from 34 yards out. And it's up and it's perfect. Right down Peachtree. Yeah, Georgia dodged one. That could have been a turnover. They ended up with three points. Team just went 54 yards in five plays, but one chunk of it was 51 yards. Georgia had to settle for a field goal. And a 17-10 Alabama lead. Georgia defense. Find the way to stop that running game. Six deficits in that 29-game winning streak for Georgia. Another one here today. Quick throw, not a good one to Jan Miller. As Jalen Miller is sort of short on that one. Nick Saban has never lost to Georgia in an SEC championship game. But he does have the team that was the last team to beat the Georgia Bulldogs. All of that and more on the line here in the next quarter and a half. Isaiah Bond in motion on second down and 10. Georgia will blitz. Milrow steps around, running out of time. Got away again. And he'll tiptoe out of bounds. Short game, but he avoided the sack. And you're right, it's one thing to get pressure on Jalen Milrow. It's another thing to get him on the ground. That's what Kirby talked to us about. You weaken pressure him, but no one has gotten this guy on the ground the last five weeks. It does force a third and eight, though, with a short scramble. And Alabama is one for seven on third down. Low snap again, Milrow has to throw quickly and got it complete to Burton and he's got a first down. Corner blitz, but it came a little bit. Kamari Lassiter that time comes from the corner. Watch him, it takes too long to get there. Milrow sees it late, no one blocks him. He's still able to get the 10 yard pass off. In front of Malachi Starks right there with a nice grab by Burton. You get a free rusher and they don't get there in time. Milrow less than 50% completion, but two big touchdowns. The toss to Jan Miller. Miller with blockers in front. Dropped by Malachi Starks. Remember, when that running game started going for Alabama, it started off after a Jalen Milrow run. Yeah. They have not called another one of those rushing attacks where it's just a design, you know, pull the guard power runs for Jalen Milrow. Rushing yards relatively even between these two teams. And the quarterback numbers on the plus side for Milrow with those two touchdowns. Here's an end around. And who is it a horse collar or not? Nope. Just got yes, it threw is. It. He threw it. The question Xavier's was, story. The question I got for Gina, did he get his hands in front of the shoulder pads? Well, yep. you know what, Gary, the left. The left hand is on the outside of the shoulder pad. I'm looking at the right hand. Is that Both outside? Near, it's really, really close. That left hand looks like it's on top to me, though, guys. Personal foul. Horse foul. Whoa. Oh, no. 
let's see one more look one now I'm good with the gear you look at the right hand it's inside the collar on the last look we got you see the right hand it's in that collar and it's abrupt I agree with the call okay. Kirby Smart does not Kirby will meet you after the game to talk to you about that <laughs> Kendrick Law was the ball carrier I, I thought he was on top of the shoulder pads but just different ways to look at it Line of scrimmage at 41 now, first and 10. Roydell Williams with a head of steam, nice run. Again, that time penetration by the Georgia defensive line ended up creating a gash in that wall up front, ran right by it. I think that time it was Logan again, number 96, ILO, and he got right by it. Got six. As we approach six, remaining in the third quarter. The tide in dog territory at the 33-yard line. Second down and four. Law joins the backfield. Whoa. And a low snap. There's one of those plays again. No row. Going to go to the corner of the end zone. Burton almost one-handed it. Incomplete as Dalen Everett was covering. It, it, it appeared that he was surprised again by the snap here. Did it come early or just low? Yeah, it was early. I don't even think the offensive line knew it was coming. Throw it deep in those situations. Been right? a problem all year long for Alabama. Stray snaps, snaps that don't come when you want them to, and some that do before you're ready. Seth McLaughlin's been playing center a long time, but... He's an undersized center, and he's always thinking about somebody like Nazir Stackhouse in his face. Kirby, this, this off defense will come after him. They do with five. Milro, this time they get to him. They're in field goal range. Here. Hey, Milro doesn't think he was down. And I don't know if I heard a whistle or not. The referee called him down. He's signaling fourth down. All right, let's look again. He might not bet. There's nothing you can do about this, right, Gene? He's been called down. Even if he wasn't, the play is dead. You're right, Gary. Absolutely right. I was looking at the right shin. If you look at that look, right angle of our camera, look at Miller's right shin right there. It's down. You see the shin and the calf down. Good, it's a good, good call. Good good call contact, guys. <laughs> you got better eyes than I do. Well, they, they look for those shins. That's uh, You got it. I, it's almost <laughs> the back of the shin. It was like his calf muscle so it was a sack it was a loss of 11 milro still not buying it the, again the aggressive defensive call georgia knew they were in field goal range you knew they were going to blitz and they came free so alabama's got to give it up burn it to punt 10 men out there for alabama no real big hurry here, whether you pump from the 45 or the 55, still it's gonna immaterial. Have, still going to have time, I think. Yes. Just a 10. Muse waits for Georgia back around the 10-yard line. Burnham's kick. He's got to take the fair catch, but it's way back at the 5. Mm, tough decision there. Well, it looks like Carson Beck might have hurt a finger, but I've been over here on the Georgia sideline. No trainers have come over to him, and he is back in the game, but something to keep an eye on, guys. And it's not on his throwing hand, which is good news, but it's maybe very uncomfortable. First down, Georgia, from the six-yard line. And still, the six-yard line, maybe the five, might have been a loss of a yard. Caleb Downs with a tackle. Boy, what a freshman yeah, he has been. Leading tackler on the team has played more snaps than anybody on the Alabama football team this year. Georgia got a field goal in their last drive. Their first points since that opening 83-yard march that just looked like they were going to go run away I don't, and hide. I don't see Kool-Aid McKinstry back in the game, by the way. Jenny just confirmed to us that he's out. Second and ten in the shotgun from the goal line and empty backfield. Back out to Ladd McConkey. Got it to maybe the 12-yard line. And I bet he's going to be slow getting up again. And he is. He's not 100%. He's not even close. Tresman Marshall, one of his own teammates from Athens, made the tackle. 
And, and one guy's hurt catching the ball. The other guy's hurt blocking for the guy that's hurt. Yep. And he got spilled on from behind did Brock Bowers. They're down at three. Don't want to do anything crazy here. Puck wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Well, I think they need a first down pad. That doesn't it feel like that. Yes. Back into some traffic, and he tucked it in there. Beautiful throw. And Dylan it, Bell. Yeah, one of those emerging players that became more of a go-to guy with the injuries outside. Good coverage. Terry and Iron was all over him, but the ball is thrown low and accurately, and that's the advantage of running that slant pick. Just get in front of him, and a good quarterback will handle it. Now false start on Bowers. False start. Offense, number 19. First down. Got to think with the bad leg and the bad ankle that he's just overthinking everything. He's trying so hard. Well, and remember in this game two years ago when they played Alabama, he had 15 targets and 10 catches in this yep. game. One touchdown, eight of them went for first downs. He was the go-to player in that game. Season high tying sixth penalty against the Dogs. First and 15 now. Rosalie Jack Saint will come in and join the group in tight. They're going to come with the end around, and the ball is out. I think Georgia, no, Alabama's got it. Tresman Marshall. Carson Beck thought Dylan Bell had the ball. Watch, when he goes for the handoff, he just lets it lay there. He has no idea it's on the ground. Fancy ball handling. Come around, fake. Watch when he hands it off. He just pretends like he's got it already. They didn't. And then it looked momentarily like Fairchild had covered it right there, but no. Dresman Marshall, the former dog, with the big gift for the tie. We talked about it before the game. Would it be a big mistake or a big play that could cause yep. the difference in this game? There's a mistake. There's a mistake. We'll see if this is the story of the game first turnover of the ball game and a huge one in scoring position at the 11 yard line already Another one. jam miller spins his way for about three of course jam miller is in there getting plays because jace mcclellan is not well out for the game didn't even dress Miller's been his replacement along with Roydell. Williams. There's Glenn Schumann, the defensive coordinator, right next to the head coach. Now you wonder if you use Milrow in the running game down here. How do you use number four in the red zone? They can get a first down, the tide at the one yard line. And it is Milrow running. Blockers in front, but not good enough. And he's run out of bounds for a loss. So Gary called it, but the play didn't net them anything. Pretty sure they didn't hear me, but they defended it perfectly. You know on that hit chart for this Georgia defense, red zone, look for number four, and they did a good job of defending it. This is the biggest play for the Georgia defense. They try to force a field goal attempt out of that turnover. Carson Beck can only look on and hope his defense comes up with a stop on third down and nine in the final minute of the third quarter. Milrow. Somebody's in his face as he lets it go, and Burton, did he catch it? Nope. Close. Tried to kind of cuddle it on his lap. Georgia went with the two spies again up front. Burton was open. But the ball was slightly underthrown. Watch the two spies. Right here, right here. They're just looking for the quarterback run. No quarterback run. Pressure. And they stop it. Great job of this Georgia defense. Forcing it. Just enough pressure inside by Walker, number 11. So Will Reichert in to try to tack three more on. And a kick from 27 is good. The Georgia defense had to have a stop, and they did. To give Alabama a double-digit lead. And then kicks it out of the end zone. 48 seconds in regulation to play. 
Bowers in motion and settles in down to the left side. Carson Beck. Tough catch for Milton. And he got a short gain out of it. That's the way the game started out, didn't it? Uh, you know, Georgia dropping back, Carson Beck looking around, taking his swing passes, just keeping the Alabama defense off balance with short passes, picking them. Can he get back? Can Georgia get back to that style on that opening drive? The Georgia Tech game is the only game that he hasn't passed for over 250 yards. He's got 176 right now. Yeah, it was 13 of 20 in that game. Corner blitz coming, crossing route, and that's going to be a first down to Dominique Lovett, and it's going to bring our third quarter to a finish. Coach Smart, how does this team fight for their lives in this final quarter? They're a resilient team. They've been that way all year. Very balanced offense, defense. We got to get a little spark on offense. We're playing much better in the second half on defense. We got two freshman linebackers out there that are fighting for their life. I love watching them grow up. I love this environment. Have fun, Coach. Thank you. Good luck. I don't know how you can keep smiling, but well, he loves coaching them, and he knows his team is capable of coming back, but they've got a long ways to go. Down 10 with 15 to play. Carson back in trouble, runs into his own lineman and goes down. Justin Aboigby's got him. Yeah, and again, just enough coverage in the back end that allowed the Alabama pass rush to flush Beck out of the pocket and push inside. Nobody wide open, maybe a check down, but you know Carson had his eyes deep downfield when he felt that pressure to evacuate the pocket. Loss of three. Second down and 13. Play fake to Edwards. Down the middle and into some traffic incomplete intended for McConkey. So you just wonder, just out loud, the way McConkey is limping, the way that Brock Bowers is not 100%, might it be better for this Georgia team to get their healthy players on the field? It appears to me that Ladd cannot get separation as hard as he's trying might it just be better to let the other guys run the routes remember their biggest play of the night was to arian smith for 51 yards third and 13 hard to take your great guys out of the game though. absolutely back far sideline almost picked off and a good job by bell to play defense there absolutely and again Number nine, Trey Amos. You bet. Amos to the outside. Good redirection of the receiver. Looks back oh. and could have picked it up. You're right. If Dylan Bell didn't help him play defense, but how about that snap? That play for Amos. He engages the receiver, forces him the way he wants, and then looks back for the ball. Remember, you, he's not the starter. He's in for Kool-Aid McKinstry. And, and, you know, Nick Saban coaches those corners, and he's going to love that play. You're not kidding. Brett Thorson. Has to punt on fourth and 13. Caleb Downs back deep for Alabama. And he'll be forced to take the fair catch around the 20-yard line. But it's Alabama that's got the ball in the lead right now. Law and Miller join no row in the backfield. Roydell Williams. Nice job, Mike. Chambliss that time, number 32, reading the zone, reading it, collapsing it on the play. Pick up of a couple, Jazz Chambliss with the stop. Right side of your screen right here, watch him read the play, collapse down and make it. Same formation. Jalen Milrow has a look, and now he's going to send Law in motion. Play action, the pocket's collapsing, and down he goes inside the 10-yard line. Walthour with the sack. Walthour was the first one there. 
Jalen Milrow likes to bleed that pocket. He's the second longest throw. I mean, holding the ball in the pocket. He holds it longer than almost anyone but one other player in college football. That led to the sack. Must have been great coverage downfield. That's a fourth sack for the Dogs. And it forces a third and 19. Milrow inside his own five. Throws on a crossing route to Dupree, the tight end, but he's going to be well short of the first down. Evan Bullard that time, I think number 22, saw that play coming all the way across, attacked it. That's one thing against the Georgia secondary. It's tough to get yak yards against them. Their safeties are great tacklers. Bullard sees it, played a lot of football. Watch him close on the play as the ball is thrown and makes the sure tackle. Devon was the defensive MVP of both playoff games for Georgia last year, including the championship game at two interceptions and a fumble recovery. He comes up with a big stop there to force Burnup to kick. On the run, on the catch. Anthony. A nice return. That's how you attack a football game. Anthony Evans. You don't play it safe. You go up, no fair catch. You try to bust a big one. Kirby said they need a spark. They had a long pass that didn't quite light the fuse. Maybe this one will. Now on special teams, maybe a 31-yard punt return by Anthony Evans. Nobody's won this championship after trailing by eight or more in the fourth quarter. Georgia trying to change that statistic. Think of the stakes. Think of the pressure in this game. At the Alabama 35, Kendall Milton for five. Still don't have to be in any hurry if you're Georgia. Running those plays inside, making first downs. No need to panic. Tim Smith made the tackle after don't, a five-yard game. Excuse me. Do not want to go from away from what you do best. Remember, Nick Saban in the SEC championship game has had Kirby Smart's number. But in the national championship game, it went the other way. Trying to find a hole somewhere is Milton. And he's going to be short by a couple. If you're Georgia, whatever you call here, you cannot lose yardage. You would think that your field goal kicker could at least get this to a one possession game if you don't make the first down. The question would be, if it's fourth and a half a yard, what do you do? It's becoming a nail biter. Sugar huddle. He pulls it. He fires it. Back shoulder incomplete, but a penalty marker down. And this time there's a grab. Arnold's not going to get away from this one. Another aggressive call. Rosemary St. Jack. Rosemary. Excellent. Pass interference on that defense. Number three. Call the place foul. Automatic first down. And fighting all the way down the play, but it's a back shoulder throw. And that's when he grabs him and has his hands all over him. Boy, it's a fight out there, isn't it? it Nobody is. has given an inch. Those corners for Alabama, they don't have their best one in the game. At that time, they attacked Arnold. Alabama, only their second penalty, but a big one. Georgia in the red zone at the 16-yard line. McConkie's in there in a slot to the left. Beck throws. McConkie at the one. His biggest play of the day. It's first and goal. Matched up almost a slant type play against Malachi Moore. Play action pass. Nobody defend. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown. Go fast. And with the extra point, it's a three point game. You saw Carson Beck after the throw to McConkie saying, come on, guys, come on, let's get up there. And he knew it was his number, and he scored. 
The punt return, the spark Kirby was looking for. The aggressive third down call. Third and short, they go stop right to the outside. Woodring in for the point after an all-important one. Up and good. For running it, Tebow beat him with his arm. Is that going to be what's going to have to happen for Millwall? Is he going to have to get the yards with the throwing, or can he get some more rushing yards? Bond in motion. Alabama first down from the 25. Millwall throws complete. To Bond on the run, the gainer for Isaiah Bond. So the question was, what would Alabama do to start moving the football? Tebow went, I think, 8-for-8 eight eight in the fourth corner. That's a start for this Alabama offense. Really good start, a 21-yard pickup. Out to the 46. Roydell Williams straight up the gut, big opening. That almost 10. Oh, he blasted through there. Yeah, that was a big hole. Watch inside this time. This has to be a huge, yes, cross block that time. I have a gap play right there, and they gashed him with that play. That was not a zone block. That was a gap block. Offensive lineman coming from one side to the other, old trap style. He got nine yards, and he'll get a breather. Jam Miller comes in for him. Burton in motion across the field. Milrow looking right, now scanning the field, throws late, got a man wide open over there, it's Bond again, and Bond's got a first down. Way back when we were first talking to Jalen Milrow about his running prowess, he says, I'm a passer, I know I can run when I want to, I like to stay in the pocket and throw the ball. Those are two good starters after the big touchdown by Georgia. He told Jenny during the offseason, I don't work on running, I work on passing. <laughs> it's paying off. At the 33-yard line of the Dogs, with eight and a half to go, slow snap, handoff, Jam Miller trying to go wide, got away from one guy, not the second, but he did get a decent game, as he was knocked out by Xavier Sori. One of those low snaps handled well. It does sometimes feel like the defense loses the football, no doubt. Ball, right? Yep. I mean, the linebackers seem lost after that. Can't the... defend what you can't see. Right. I mean, he bounced that out, and there was no second-level tackler there. Second down at six. Miller looking to the sideline. will have a word with his center. Miller. Yeah, he plowed forward. It's two yards shy of the first down, third okay. down and two. Yeah, remember the last drive. Georgia was in a position just like this. And they went with the comeback throw to the outside to pick up the first down. It was a penalty. I'll admit it, but they picked it up. Alabama going with some tempo here on third down and two. Milrow pumps in trouble. A shovel pass to Bond again. And a first down. An aggressive call again by this Alabama offense. Third and short, they want that seven points. They don't want three. And look at that heads up play by Milrow. I, I think it was tipped as well. 13 yard pickup. A third and two. Again, Georgia aggressive, Alabama aggressive. To beat these two teams, you can't play it safe. Georgia does not want to give up a touchdown here as there's less than seven minutes to play from the 12 yard line. Milrow gonna lob this one over to Bond again. Isaiah Bond, touchdown Alabama. He did it again. Just a little check down, the patience. I believe Jalen Milrow was four for four on this drive. Did he get across? Was his elbow down, his knee down? 
Here's a couple more looks. Yep, elbow down just short. Right elbow. Gene, did I get it right? I, you did get that one right, Gary. You hit it perfectly. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not if we get it right. It's if the guys here get yeah, it right. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And they're going to look under review. Call on the field was a touchdown. Yep, right elbow was down before the ball crossed. After video review, the runner's right arm was down a half yard short of the goal line. It'll be first and goal, half yard short of the goal and line. Now remember, the clock will wind. And now Milrow, it appears it's a quarterback sneak with a push from behind. It is. And no signal. Guess he didn't get it. Nope. Got about half of it. Nice job again, number 78 Stackhouse. He didn't move back an inch that time. Talk about losing sight of people. You know, I mean, an Alabama offensive lineman actually went underneath Stackhouse that time. Now Gary's talked about pileups. We had another pileup. And a second and goal. Let's see if they try the same thing. Nope. Handoff. No, I don't know about that one either. I thought he got in late. He did. Touchdown. Roydell Williams. How about that answer? Aggressive answer. It started out throwing the ball. Four pass plays, completing all four of them, and then they push it in. And Roydell Williams stopped it first, right? And then second effort, and in right there. Behind Dupree, the tight end, and his offensive lineman. And now, a point away from a 10-point cushion again with time running out on Georgia. Will Riker, the senior place kicker for the extra point, up and good. Back-to-back -back national titles, eight straight wins in the SEC championship game for Alabama. And the SEC champ has reached the college football playoff all nine seasons. But for Georgia, that's in doubt. For Alabama, it may be even in doubt. Georgia's got all their timeouts left, but time is of the essence. 5.47 to go. Carson Beck, little middle screen to the tight end, Brock Bowers, and he's close to a first down. Obviously, Georgia has to go hurry up. No more huddling for this Georgia team unless the clock stops. Bowers after that catch of nine plus gets in a slot on the right hand side on second and a yard back looking to Rosemary, Rosemary Jack Saints incomplete too low. So the clock stops with that incompletion. It's third down and one. Yeah. Now you got to pick up this first down, hand it off and get this first down up here, Georgia. Dejon Edwards in the backfield will get the carry. I don't know. I don't think oh, so. No, he didn't. Which means they're going to have to run it again. And Remember the down. And, and again, without the first down, the clock continues to run. Just too much penetration. And for Dejon Edwards, maybe a little bit too much hesitation. Fourth and inches. Georgia may never see the football again if they don't pick this up. Edwards, this time he's got it, and he comes out the back end and all the way to the 45. Same play. Same play on two. Let's just block it better. Everybody gets challenged, and this time Van Pran, the center, gets his man and moves him out. First down at the 45. Now Beck back to the air. Maybe. Oh, and a face uh -oh. mask and a pretty bad one. Reached out. Chris Braswell. Trying to make the play, that's just unintended, but it happens. You're one of those pass rushers. You try to grab the shoulder pad, and you end up with a 15-yard gain. It's Jaheim Otis, not the correct oh, was it? here, but I'm sorry. Yeah, it was yep. 91. Coming off the edge? Yep. And he goes out. He's got a big reach, Jaheim does. He does. <laughs> He's got big everything. Horseman foul, face mask, defense, number one. 90, excuse me, number 91. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Georgia in that 29-game winning streak, 
Trail Missouri by 13 at one point. Ohio State, Gary mentioned that. The game winner coming back against Auburn. But man, they got their back against it right now with four and a half minutes to go and down 10. Back. Down the middle, got it. Complete. Makai Muse. It's a first down. And one of those down the line receivers that Georgia, seven different receivers have caught more than 20 passes for this team this year. Another one of those guys they'll use. Georgia going hurry up as they got it to the 26 yard line. Back, back to work. Carson fires in the middle. Got it. Complete Brock Bowers. Boy, look at the space they're giving Brock Bowers on this one. Plenty of room off the line. Oh, what a catch. And he reaches out and grabs it. Playing on one leg. First and goal, Georgia at the seven for a 20 yard pickup. Kendall Milton trying to battle back. Did. Still going to the one. But they had him stopped in the backfield. Twisted once or twice on that play. From the one yard line. Vex got one touchdown today. They spun him, didn't they? Yep, as well, kind of spun yep, him around. Did. A little hip toss right here. Beck finally gets under center as Bauer splits out as the only receiver. Second man through is Kendall Milton for the touchdown. They had their heavy offense in there that time. An extra offensive lineman at fullback was lined up. Georgia two for two on fourth downs today. None bigger than this one. I think that's Makai Morris, number 56 at fullback. That used to be Jalen Carter back in that fullback spot. But he takes it on and gets him into the end zone. Woodring's extra point to make it a field goal game is good. They're trying to give the signal to Kirby to kick it deep. And it's going to be a squib. Live ball still. And touchdown by Kendrick Law makes the second smart play of the day as a kick returner. Down to the last 251. Empty backfield for Jalen Milrow. And now Bond, his favorite guy, on the move. And he's going to run it, and he's going to come up big. Jalen Milrow. And he wisely hits the deck at the 45-yard line to keep the clock running. Last time, four for four on the drive. This time, starts out with a running play to start out the series. And as Ness said, smartly keeps the clock running. 30 yards later. Just remember, this is the guy they benched after the game, the first two games. <laughs> Doesn't seem possible, does no. it? So they can work it down right about in two minutes as he has a look up at that clock at the Georgia 45-yard line. First and 10, Alabama. Into the middle of the pile, maybe three yards for Rodell Williams. Timeout with 157. Second down and eight right now. And Milrow will keep it again. It's his game right now. That's it. Fake the toss and then went straight ahead. A little bit of eye candy. Three Georgia defenders all follow the fake that time. And Milrow takes it up. Only one timeout left in the game for Georgia. And he covered his own fumble on top of everything else. How about that play call by Tommy Reese? That was punched out by, was it Bullard that punched that ball out? I think it was 22. Yeah, it was. First and 10. Corner blitz. Georgia trying everything defensively to see if they can get the ball out of there. And finally, the whistles blow the end of that play. 
And Georgia's taking its final timeout. Somebody else is going to get short circuited. Short There's the knee. The Crimson Tide, the last team to beat Georgia. Texas goes even over an undefeated Florida State game team. That could be, that could happen. But I think Alabama's in the play. They are 12 and 1. They're perfect against Georgia in SEC championship games. So is Nick Saban over Kirby Smart in those battles. Coach, you just beat the unbeatable to win the SEC championship. Why was your Alabama team the one to accomplish that feat? Hey, I guess they wanted to prove to all the naysayers out there that we could do it. I knew at halftime that these guys are going to keep fighting, but our guys showed great perseverance to grind it out and get some great drive to answer when they score. This is great, man. I'm so proud of this team, proud of our players, proud of our fans. This is great. Winning the SEC is big. It's been a transformational year for this team, and you've had to prove a lot. Do you think you've proved enough to get to that college football playoff? That's not really for me to say. I'm going to enjoy this win, and we'll figure it out tomorrow. But we did our part. We did what we had to do to have a chance. And how about this first-year starter over here, his first SEC championship start in this what about the job that Jalen Mill wrote it tonight? Jalen did a great job. I mean, especially in the drive when we had to have it. I mean, he made some key plays. We made some big catches right before the half. We made some big time throws when we scored right before the half. So we had a couple of fantastic drives, and obviously just because of him. Thank you, Coach.